Hello friends, it's Grace and welcome back to another video. Uh, the video that I'm going to be doing today is talking you through some of the indie self-published fantasy books that um, I am the most excited about. So one of my goals from my 2022 reading goals video was to read more indie and self-published books this year, um, sort of specifically fantasy because that's my favorite genre, but kind of just regardless to, to read more self-published. That was one of my goals. So ever since then, I've kind of been looking around and collecting a list of the ones that I'm the most interested in and the most excited about. So I have six or seven books on this list. I can't remember which it is exactly, but these this is not an exhaustive list by any means. If a book is not on this list, it doesn't mean that I'm not interested in reading it like whatsoever. Um, these are just some of the ones that I've seen around, whether people have been hyping them up and reviewing them recently or whether they've just caught my eye. Uh, these are just a few of the ones that I am the most excited about right now. The first book that I have on this list is Dragon Mage by M.L. Spencer. and. Even just as I am filming this, Andrew from Andrew's Wizardly Reads just recently came out with a video, a dedicated review on this book. So if you're interested, you can also go check out his video. But like he loved this book and it was his top book for the year of 2021. So I, this kind of just pushed me over the edge of being like, okay, this is for sure on my list because I have heard other people liking it and I think that it has good reviews but I don't think that I've seen anyone um, really championing it like Andrew has been in the past few weeks. So anyway, um, this book stars a main character named Aram or Aram, I think Aram probably. And this is a boy who um, is an autistic protagonist, which is a really interesting perspective in itself. And Aram is from like a small fishing village and I think that he kind of leads a simple life and doesn't really think much of like larger and greater ambitions for his life. That's what it sounds like from the synopsis. But he has some really rare and really powerful magic uh, in his blood. So once he discovers this about himself, he goes off to like a school for magic and to become a mage and to become a magic user and to also be um, like a dragon rider. So it seems like this is gonna be a really epic tale and adventure for Aram because it says in the synopsis that he is going to become a class of mage that has not been seen in the world for a very long time. He is so powerful and I'm really looking forward to seeing what the journey is for how we get from this boy or man from a small fishing village all the way to where the story ends. And as Andrew said in his video, um, this was going to be a standalone, but there will be a second book. So of course, I will see how the first one goes before I worry about that second one, but it is really cool that the reception has been good enough that the author is uh, extending more into this world. The second book that I have on this list is Voice of War by Zach Argyle, which is the first book in the Threadlight series. And this is another one where a lot of people that I know have read this one, I think in 2021, not necessarily super recently, but just generally, it seems like a lot of people that I follow have enjoyed this series. The first two that come to mind are Dom from Dominish Books. Uh, he is often a champion for self-published books and I love that about his recommendations on his channel and also Leslie from The Nerdy Narrative and she also is often a champion for self-published books and I love that both of them like so shed some light um, no pun intended on the Threadlight series because it does sound really interesting so based on the synopsis we follow three characters and three uh, like plot lines through this book the first one is 
well, okay, let's, first of all, the tagline says, their child will save the world if they can keep the damn kid alive. So that's, that's funny. Um, I like the tone of that right away. And so the first character that we follow says, Chris Valerian is tasked with uncovering the group responsible for a group of missing thread weavers. And so these, I think, are the magic users of this world. They're able to manipulate thread light. And of course, that's the title of the series. And then it says that with each failure, there is a dark voice growing in his head. And then the second plot that we are introduced to in the synopsis is a young girl from a secret city. She goes off to explore the streets of a place called Alkia, um, never expecting that her journey would end in chains. So that's a very interesting statement that makes you wonder how you get from point A to point B with her. And then the third character little blurb that we get is Far in the deserts to the south, a young man's life changes after he dies. Which, I mean, sounds like a super cool sentence, doesn't it? So then we come back to, I believe our main plot line will be Chris Valerian because it says that as he finally learns who's responsible for the missing thread weavers, uh, people start coming after him. And then I think that from there, we probably have an interweaving of these three plots because it kind of says that uh, these three people and these three characters that we're following are gonna be able to change the world. So I'm very intrigued um, and the good reviews from other people help this along. And and Zach Argyle also is kind of like in the booktube community as well, so it's very cool to have self-pub authors feel really personal like that, and I would love to support him by loving this series, so I hope that I do. The third book that I have on my list, or series, is Unsold, or the first book in the Cradle series by Will White. And so this I have heard good reviews for, but I have also heard that this is progression fantasy and that people People who I think either read manga or watch anime will really see the influences of that and if that's their thing then this is probably their thing and so I don't like I mean I don't have anything against anime or manga but it isn't something that I consume so I definitely won't have that sort of background knowledge to see the influences on this series so I don't know whether that's something for me or not like I'm not saying that it's not but I have no idea whether it actually is for me so the basic premise of this series is that the book is called unsold right so we follow a world where characters can use their souls I think to manipulate the natural world and that's sort of the magic system that we're looking at but we follow a character who is unsold so cannot participate in this magic system, does not have the ability to do those things, and I think that this character is sort of uh, forced by fate to, to step out and forge their own like destiny and their own path. So, I mean, there is path with a capital P referenced in this synopsis, so I'm not exactly sure what a path is, but I think literally he has to go out and forge his own path. So I like that setup. I like the idea of a character who struggles with something that makes them sort of an outcast from a lot of other characters in their world and how they're going to deal with it and where it goes from there. So yeah, I am really interested. The next book on my list is Winds of Strife by Yuji Gutman, and this is one that recently uh, I have heard, well, Jessie from Jessie May talk about on her channel, and I'm pretty sure that I have heard her talk about it before. And I put it on my list back then, but I think it kind of got like bumped down. And then when I heard her recently talk about it in like her favorites video, it kind of renewed for me what she had said about it before that really hooked me. And she compared it to like Sanderson's magic systems and how cool this magic system in this book really is. And that is such a pull for me, that comparison. And this book does sound really, really cool. So what it seems like the setup is is we have a world where witches and witch hunts have been going on for a very long time and it's because of a paranoid king who can't stand the thought of women who can practice this certain magic that exists in this world 
and we seem to follow a character named Nye who is actually a member of the Witch Hunters but has been waiting for over a decade for an opportunity to present itself for him to destroy them from the inside, which sounds so cool. However, I think that really the driving force behind the impact of this book is that our main character has been driven into a place of violence and maybe a dark place mentally where he has been holding on to the pretense of being part of the witch hunters for such a long time that it has done really rough things to him as a person. And so we're looking at a story about this character where their goal is to end the witch hunters and overthrow the king but they're still not sure whether that is going to resolve them of the things that they've done so it sounds like it's going to be a really interesting character and a really interesting emotional journey combined with that amazing magic system um, I'm really excited for Winds of Strife next up on my list is Illborn by Daniel T Jackson and this is another one that I have heard people talking about more semi-recently because I think this is a pretty really recent release if I'm not mistaken um, and the two people that stand out on this one are definitely Dom again from Dominish Books and then Patrick from Patrick Leo and I'm really glad that I got to watch Patrick's review for this because the pros that he listed for this and the way that he described the characters sounded really super appealing to me and compelling and so the setup for Illborn is that a very long time ago there was a holy figure who I think was elevated with like powers from divine powers like I assume there are gods that he got these powers from and this Lord uh, forced all of the lands to unite under his rule and then he ascended to heaven so that was a long time ago so there is a jump from the history of this land to where we are now and the immediate setup for the plot of this book is that we follow four characters who are all 18 if I'm not mistaken I think Patrick might have mentioned that but I might not be remembering correctly regardless there are four modern people People who are living in a world that has a lot of war and a lot of uh, religious probably motivated war and religious persecution going on but these four people start to develop supernatural abilities and this is I guess a mystery to them and these are very forbidden and secret powers and they start to have dreams that connect them to something that is a mystery that they are trying to uncover about what this could possibly be. And it kind of culminates, at least in the synopsis, with the fact that all four of these characters that we follow are trying to stay ahead of sinister forces that are pursuing them, I assume as a direct result of the fact that they, for some reason, are manifesting these secret powers. So I am extremely, extremely excited to get to this book. Uh, I, for someone who doesn't really engage with religion in real life, honestly love reading about religion in fantasy worlds because I think there are so many interesting things that you can do with it and it sounds like this is going to be a really interesting take on it because of the fact that uh, there's a lot of probably religious conflict going on in this world and it sounds like these powers could be related to this historical figure that united this world in the first place. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what the uh, plot of this one is because the synopsis focuses more on the characters and what the kind of driving force behind this series becomes because this is the first in a series. So uh, yeah, this sounds super, super interesting and I'm really looking forward to Illborn. The next book on my list is Never Die by Rob J. Hayes, which is part of a series called The Mortal Techniques. And from what I understand, this is a series of standalones that can be read, uh, I mean, all of them can be read. I believe they exist in the same universe, but again, they can be read alone. They are standalones. So this, from the synopsis, kind of reminds me of the Sword of Kagan. Um, I get the sense that it's Asian inspired, or well, it does mention samurai, so I think that it's Asian inspired. And so the synopsis of Never Die tells us that there is an emperor who has plunged his lands into war and the gods are not happy with him over this. So the god of death gives 
this other character a mission to kill the Emperor, but our character, who is an eight-year-old boy, um, knows that it's not going to be simple or easy for him to simply kill the Emperor, so he needs uh, people and heroes and legends and whatever he can find for, in terms of help um, to help him achieve this goal and this task that he has been set of killing the Emperor. However, the really interesting part of this is that the God of Death has given our main character a way to bind heroes to his cause, and that is that in order to serve, they have to die. So this just sounds really, really cool. I don't even think that it's that long, so I have a feeling that it is really just going to be this compelling adventure of this one task and it's going to be that type of setup where you're collecting your health at the beginning and then you then set out on this quest and I'm really excited to see how uh, everything culminates and yeah. I also love the cover for this book. I think that the style is really awesome. So I am very very interested in Never Die and yeah. The very last book on my list is Of Blood and Fire which is the first series, or the first book, sorry, in the Bound and the Broken series by Ryan Cahill. And this one sounds very epic as well. So what this synopsis says is, Etheria is a land divided by war and mistrust. The High Lords are squabbling and fighting, and they're kept in check by something called the Dragon Guard. Um, but it says that the Dragon Guard are traitors from a long time past who serve the Empire of the North. So I guess they can keep the South in check in their two separate kingdoms, maybe. And our main character, Kaelin Briar, is from a village in the very south of Etheria. And he has lost his brother and he is preparing for this test that not everyone survives that is called The Proving. So there's not too much detail about this. I'm not sure whether this is something that everyone has to go through. But it says that strangers arrive in his village and Kaelin's world is kind of ripped apart and he is plunged into the plot, I assume. The part that I really like about this is that the end of this synopsis says, There is no prophecy. His coming was not foretold. He bleeds like any man, and bleed he will. And so I just think that that's really interesting because I like the idea of kind of flipping the chosen one trope, even though I love the chosen one trope, and saying like, maybe you're not the chosen one, but you are going to be the one that deals with this. Like, you are our character that is going to do this plot. So this, like I said, it does sound very epic. Um, I like the idea of this divided like kingdom or country or whatever it is that Etheria is. And it sounds like there is a lot being set up here in terms of conflict and hopefully a lot of very interesting stuff. So yeah, Of Blood and Fire sounds great and I know that the second book in this series just came out. So if I like it, there is a continuation, which I love. So that was seven books, seven indie and self-pub fantasy books that I am the most interested in right now. They just sound really cool and I desperately hope that I can get to most of these very soon. So let me know what you thought of these if you've read them. Uh, let me know if you have any other self-pub book recommendations that you think that I would enjoy. Let me know what your favorites have been recently, any of that stuff. Uh, leave me a comment and chat with me. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Like if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more content from me. I post videos every Monday and Thursday and I hope that you have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye!